Hey art nerds, today we're going to do another floral tutorial using alcohol markers and watercolors. I hope you guys will check out my daylily tutorial that was the first in this series and I hope you ch will check out some of my other wonderful watercolor and alcohol marker tutorials here on this channel. So I have my reference here today. We are going to draw and render a hibiscus and we're going to be following much the same path we forged with our daylily. So the materials you're going to need for this tutorial are your reference flower. Here I have a photo of a hibiscus. You're going to need fluid easy block watercolor paper. This is a cellulose based watercolor paper. You're going to need a pencil and you're going to need a waterproof and alcohol marker proof pen. Today we are using the Pigma FB. If you're interested in working along with this exact demonstration, Art Nerds on Patreon will have access to this photo as well as access to the resulting line art. So let's go ahead and get started. Wow, wow! Apparently I have a succulent here already. So <laughs> that was not intended. I should have checked my pad first. I'll show you guys how to render this one in another video, but I'm gonna go grab and double check to make sure that I have a fresh six by six fluid watercolor pad. Okay, here we have a fresh one. So let's actually go ahead and get started. As with the Daily Lily tutorial, most of the work is going to be in time lapse and I'm going to explain what I'm doing as I go. So don't get discouraged if you feel like you can't draw as fast as I do. Just keep in mind that I'm drawing at 4x speed. So now we've got our hibiscus all sketched out. It's still a fairly loose sketch, but it's tight enough that I'll be able to ink it. I want you guys to pay particular attention to kind of the ruffled edges of each petal. They move in a radial fashion along the edges of each petal. So they're actually fanning outwards individually. And then the hibiscus has a very star-shaped pattern. It has five leaves. It has these five little divots where the, uh, not leaves, petals, where the petals meet the center of the flower and the stamen. At the end of the stamen, there's like a little sharp star shape. I'm not quite sure what that is called, but um, it has this sort of star shaped formation and then it has the pollen kind of radiating out from it. The leaves are somewhat heart shaped and they have a jagged edge and they fill most of the background. So up here in this, I kind of moved it a little bit off center that's gonna make it a little bit more interesting. Generally when you're composing a piece like this, you wanna move it off center. You can even draw one of those grids and I have a tutorial on how to draw those grids and what they're useful for. You can draw one of those grids and then place it along one of those four focal points. But with such a large flower, I really wanted to give it room to take up the majority of the frame. Now I didn't sketch out every leaf. Some of those we're gonna freehand in with our alcohol markers, but I sketched in enough that we have some interest and we have some detail. So our next step is to go ahead and ink this with our Pigma FB or the alcohol proof slash waterproof marker of your choice.
All right, my friends. So I'm going to allow this to cure, letting the ink bond to the paper for about 24 hours. You can wait as little as 10 minutes. I would not wait less than that. But 24 hours, in my experience, is a good amount of time to help prevent the ink from smearing when you apply the Copic marker on top of it. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Okay, art nerds. This has had a chance to dry for 24 hours. I'm going to erase the graphite now using a really soft white vinyl eraser. We talked about this one in our last tutorial. I'm not going to erase it on camera. Y'all know how erasing works. I don't have any special erasing technique that y'all could benefit from and level up. It's just erasing. Just very careful erasing. So I'm going to erase my graphite. I'm going to go scan it so my art nerds have copies of the line art. And then I'll check back in with you guys. Okay, so it's been erased, cleaned, and scanned. I'm going to do some color picking, color swatching, and check back in with you guys. All right, so we're going to start by picking out our colors and swatching them, and then we'll dive on into the alcohol markers. The colors used in this tutorial are PB27, PB181, G05, G17, PB38, G17, B39, C10, PB38, B99, RV000, RV13, RV25, PB177, RV06, RV29, PB151, RV69, V99, Y19, YR15. The watercolor set we're using today is the Core Mini Palette Set. And we're also going to be using the Derwent Intense in Aqua White and the Albrecht Durer Magenta watercolor pencils. You're also going to want a tube of white gouache to complete the rest of this tutorial. Okay, art nerds, we have our colors swatched, we have our colors picked out, and we even have our colors ordered in number, in order of use. We have our reference here, so I think it's time to just go ahead and dive in and start markering our hibiscus with our alcohol markers. I just want to remind you guys that if you are an art nerd, if you're a patron over on my Patreon, which if you are, I want to thank you guys very much. Your support really helps a lot here on this channel. But you will have access to this line art as well as to this reference photo so that you may work along if you wish. If you're not an art nerd and you'd like access to these, pause the video now, head on over to patreon.com slash soup and join for just $2 a month. You should find this line art in the Patreon backer goodies coupons and it may have an individual unique post. I may create that post and link it in the description below just to make it a little bit easier for you guys. That is a great way to support the work that I do. Step one, foreground leaves. Apply B PB27 along exterior or foreground leaves, leaving gaps in application. Fill, it, fill some leaves with PB181, reserving some leaves. At your discretion, blend out some of the transitions between PB27 and PB181 using PB27. Again, at your discretion, apply another layer of PB181 to some of the leaves. Apply G05 to center of leaves. At your discretion, blend out using PB181 or PB27. Apply another layer of G05 to darker leaves. Apply G17 to center of leaves, focusing on heavy app heavier application towards the shaded, usually bottom, half of the leaves. Blend top half out with G05. Apply PB38 to shaded half of leaves, as well as to areas beneath hibiscus to cast shadow. At your discretion, blend out with G17. Allow to dry, apply a detail, smaller and finer layer of PB38. Step two, background leaves. Draw in leaf shapes using G17, mimicking the established shapes on line art. As you go, fill them in. Allow to dry. With B39, sketch in more leaves. Returning to G17, sketch and fill in shadows on half of each of your G7, G17 background leaves. Do the same for the blue leaves with B39. If you wish, fill in negative space, white a page with C19. Allow to dry. Apply a shadow of PB38 to green background leaves. Do the same with B99 on blue leaves. 
Hibiscus, step three. Petal by petal, fill an entire petal with RV000. With RV13, begin filling in each petal using long strokes, reserving areas of RV000 as highlights. Try to make your strokes match the grain of the line art, radiating towards the center of the hibiscus flower, and feel free to rotate the image as you go for best working angle. When you reach the pistil and stamen, or piston, yeah, pistil and stamen, use small dotted strokes to add color into the pollen area, careful not to get too much into the actual pollen itself. If you wish, soften the transition between some areas using RV000. Fill in the stamen and pistil with RV13. Give flower a chance to dry. Apply, your, apply a layer of RV25 using the same type of strokes. If you wish, blend out with RV13. You may wish to blend out from, where, from there with RV000. Going over and beyond areas covered with RV25, apply a layer of PB177 in strokes. This is a hot pink and will blend back and blend in with the RV25. Apply this petal by petal. Apply PB177 to pistil, stamen, and interior of pollen. Allow to dry. You may wish to blend some areas out with RV000 just to reintroduce some highlights. If you do so, allow to dry before the next step. Apply RV06 mainly to the center of each petal, but also to the shadow sides of ruffles. Allow to dry. Color will shift darker as it dries. Apply a layer of RV22 to the center and where there are ruffles. Using the streaking motion, delicately apply streaks of RV27 towards the edges of the petals. Color the stamen and the center of the pistil. If you wish, soften edge highlights with RV13. Apply PB151 to center of flower. Apply RV69 to the direct center of the flower and, and where the base of the petals overlap. Apply V99 to the star cluster of circles at the very center of the hibiscus. Step 4. Pollen. In a stippling motion, apply dots of Y19 to pollen area of hibiscus flower. Allow to dry. Apply similar layer of YR15, trying not to directly overlap. In this tutorial, I'm using both Prismacolor markers and Copic markers. I'm using Prismacolor markers because Prismacolor is capable of some colors that Copic just can't quite handle. So for some of the more intense purples, for some of the hotter pinks, and for some of the warmer, richer yellows, we're going to be using Prismacolor. As always, I really encourage you guys to do your own swatching and to use the colors that you feel best suit the piece. The colors that I've provided for you guys are really just a recommendation and what my students in my class use because that's what I provided them with.
So we finished with our alcohol marker application. Now we're going to move on to watercolor. For our watercolor application, I'm going to use the Core Mini palette in this tutorial. So we have about 12, we have 12 beautiful colors. These should be perfect for use with this, particularly their Quin Magenta and their Dioxine Violet. Those are really nice saturated colors, but I really like this palette and I find it's very easy to mix the colors I want with it. So it's a really versatile saturated color palette. You're also going to want three brushes. I have a quill, I have a menso brush, and I have a um, small sable. As long as you're working with rounds or you're working with brushes you're comfortable with, it really doesn't matter that much. Work with the sizes that you're comfortable with as well, but I would recommend a larger one that's very soft, a middle one for detail applications, and then a fine one for smaller details. You're also going to want a cup of water. I'm working on a non-porous craft sheet, so I'm going to use that as my mixing surface. For the watercolor portion of this tutorial, I'm using the Core Mini Palette, three round watercolor brushes in various sizes, and one cup of clean water. Step five, background. Using large brush, apply a mix of cool yellow with the Quin Gold to four, apply a mix of the cool yellow with the Quin Gold to foreground leaves for a sun-kissed effect. If you wish, working wet into wet, add in cool blue shadows. Allow to dry or dab in more saturated phthalo blue to your taste. Once dry, apply a wash of ultramarine blue to the background leaves, leaving some areas unpainted. This will push the background leaves further into the background, but leaving pops of highlight will create visual interest. While still wet, you may wish to dab in additional ultramarine blue. Allow to dry. Step 6. Hibiscus Flower Using the medium brush. Mix Quin Magenta with Dioxine Purple. Apply it to flower from center outward, blending with clean water as you go. While still wet, apply more Dioxine Purple to mixture. Apply to center of flower and allow wet into wet to blend outward. As it dries, but is still somewhat wet, apply purple mixture beneath stamen. Allow to dry fully. Apply Dioxine Purple to the circles at the base of the petals. Step 7. Pollen. Using small brush, apply yellow and Quin Gold to pollen. Allow to dry. Once dry, apply dots of pyrrol orange. Okay, arty friends, we are in kind of the final stretches for this illustration. All we really need to do next is add some white highlights. You might also want to add, I don't know, some purple or some red violet, violet highlights or low lights rather, using color pencils and a little bit of gouache. At this stage, we're going to use color pencils. The color pencils you're going to want to use are the Derwent Intense White and Albrecht Dura Magenta, or your preference for colors. Step eight, adding highlights and shadows to hibiscus. Using white watercolor pencil, apply white highlights as desired. If you wish to blend them out, do so using a cup of clean water and a medium brush. Allow paper to dry before proceeding. Apply the magenta to the center of the flower spiraling out. Use this to accentuate shadows that may have been lost. If you wish, blend it out with water and allow to dry. For the gouache portion of this tutorial, we are going to be using M. Graham's Titanium White Gouache. Step 9. Gouache Highlights and this is only if you feel it's necessary or if it adds to the piece. Using the smallest watercolor brush, add white gouache highlights as needed. Generally, this is going to be where the light is hitting the flower in this illustration. You don't have to use gouache. I just prefer gouache because I find it a little bit easier to handle. And as you guys can see, I apply it directly to my craft mat and then apply it to my watercolor paper. Alright art nerds, so that about wraps it up. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial on how to render a beautiful hibiscus flower using alcohol markers with a little bit of help from watercolor and watercolor pencils. This tutorial was recorded to help me prepare for my coloring flowers with Copic class taught through the Nashville Plaza. If you're interested in taking an in-person meet space class with me and you live in the Nashville area, you're in luck. 
I teach classes through Plaza, primarily alcohol marker classes, and I teach comic classes through Nashville Community Ed. You can sign up for any of those or you can sign up for my handy class mailing list which will let you know what classes are coming up. Even if you don't live in the Nashville area, I do teach in a vari variety, not variety, a variety of locations and I often teach workshops when I'm attending conventions. So I recommend you sign up for my class workshop mailing list regardless, especially if you live in the US because you never know when I might be in your area. I wanna thank you guys so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you found this helpful, useful, and informative. I have a full transcript of today's tutorial. If, if it's not in the description, I will link it in the description. And as I said, my art nerds not only get first crack at this, but they're going to get the line art for this hibiscus as well as a digital copy of this photo so they can work along. So I hope I'll see you guys in the near future. Make sure you check the description for all relevant links and I'll see you guys again really soon. Bye guys.